In this final part of my bond valuation series, I'm going to show a demo on the all-important concept on the inverse relationship between interest rates and bond prices. So this is one of the uh, most fascinating things in the bond market, a phenomenon that shows that when interest rates go up, the value of bonds go down. And when interest rates go down, the value of bonds rise. So this inverse relationship phenomenon is what we're about to um, demonstrate in this um, example. So now this is a summary of what I'm about to show you on spreadsheets. So let's go to spreadsheets. So first of all, uh, looking at this first panel right here, right? So here's a bond with a coupon rate of 8%, face value of $1,000, coupon rate is uh, uh, 8% and so 8% of a thousand bucks is the coupon payments of 80 bucks. Maturity of this bond is 12 years and so semi-annually these are going to be the corresponding uh, data right here. So now, let's see. Suppose the yield to maturity on this bond, I'm going to type it in, is 10%. The price of this bond is going to come out to be 862.01. And again, if you wanted to use your BA2+, plus, pull it up here, clear the screen, second clear TVM, second clear work. So again, we're going to be looking at the cash flows, which will consist of the phase value and coupon payment. So that's 1,000 is a phase value and 40, which is coupon payment. And then the second is going to be the maturity uh, period, which is 24. So type 24 is N. And finally, maturity is 5, all right? So I'll say my annual, so 5 is I over Y, so you compute PV. And that's remove the negative by clicking this key, and that's how we get the value of 862.01. Uh, all right, so going back here, we see that this is a discount bond because, as you can see, the coupon rate which determines how much interest you're receiving is below the market interest rate of 10%. So because you're getting paid at a lower rate than the current interest rate, your bond is going to turn out to be a discount bond selling at below $1,000. Now then, but suppose market interest rate is the same as um, the coupon rate of 8%. So if I type in 8% right there, all right, using all of this is done using the spreadsheet function, which I showed in the previous presentations. And uh, if you want to, here's your cheat sheet right there. All right. So if, you're, if the market interest rate comes out to be identical to your coupon rate, check this out. The value of your bond is going to be exactly equal to the face value of $1,000. So we would, we would call this a par bond. Your, your bond is selling at par. When a bond is selling at par, meaning that the market interest rate is identical to your coupon rate, it doesn't matter what the maturity of a bond is, the value of the bond will always be $1,000. If I change this from 12 to let's say um, 28 years, it's still going to be 1000 If I change this to to 1,000 years or whatever I type there, all right, oh, it doesn't make sense now, I guess, you know, so let's not get carried away. But if I were to make this 100, it's still going to be $1,000. So anyhow, in this example, it's 12. So the concept here is that whenever interest rate in the market is equal to the coupon rate, the bond is going to sell at par. Now over here, let's assume now a rate that's below your coupon rate, such as 5%. I type in 5 there, and as you can see here, your bond is now a premium bond. Why? Well, because you're earning interest at 8%, which is greater than what the current market interest rate is. So your bond is a superior bond, so to speak. And that puts a smile on your face and causes your bond to be viewed uh, more superior and as a result is going to sell at a premium. So this is going to be a premium bond. But what's to note here in addition is the inverse relationship between bond prices and interest rates. As interest rates fall from 10% to 5%, observe that the value of the bond rises from 862.01 to 1268.27. So as interest rates um, rises further, the value of this bond is going to go down more. 
So for example, if I move this up from 10% to 13%, watch this, this is going to go down some more. So I type 13% there, it goes down some more. I type 15%, it goes down even some more. All right. If on the other hand, I go down, uh, let's say, um, go back down to, let's say, 9 say 9.5%, um, it goes up, all right? And I go down some more to uh, 8%, it goes up to now the phase value because this yield is identical to the coupon rate. It goes down some more to 6.25% and it goes up some more of the price. So what's to note here again is that as interest rates go down, value of bonds go up. As interest rates go up, value of bonds go down. Why is that? Well, um, back to this uh, first uh, rate we typed in there. The, the reason is because, think about this, if you hold a bond that pays you 8% per year and you wish to sell this bond right now in the market, observe that new interest rates in the market right now is 10%. That means that no one is going to want to give you the same $1,000 you paid initially to buy your bond when interest rates was lower at 8%. So for you to be able to sell this bond, which pays only 8%, remember, bond is a fixed income security. The coupon it pays you is never, is never going to change until the bond matures. And so for you to be able to sell this bond, it's going to have to be sold at a discount because no one is going to want to give you the same $1,000, which they can pay that $1,000 and get a brand new bond paying the current market interest rate, which is now 10%. Likewise, over here, your bond pays you 8%. Now though, brand new bonds, which as you know, at the outset, will sell for $1,000 to pay you the current market interest rate of 5% but your bond is better and as a result has to sell at a higher price, has to sell at a premium. So the inverse relationship in conclusion between the price of the bond and interest rate is because the interest rate that you're receiving, the coupon rate, is fixed and because it is fixed, as rates go up, your bond will become less attractive. As rates go down, your bond will become more attractive. So these are the three scenarios we have um, looked at and additional concepts to learn about bonds is summarized right here in this section entitled Types and Descriptions of Debt Instruments and you can go over it on your own and um, that's all she wrote.